that was the turning point of his life. He had to like, it was like his shell was like shattering over the, over the course of that night. And the next day he's like, I talked to five strangers. Yeah, now you can talk to thousands of strangers. And he's like, wow, and he was just like liberated. He had, of course, he had tons of other work to do on himself, but that was like the catalyst that allowed him to break free and become a beautiful butterfly. Hey guys, welcome, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today we are going to talk about fear. Walking up to a stranger we've never seen before, that we don't know, okay, with people in the environment potentially noticing, potentially listening, potentially judging us. Also the girl we talked to, her friends could be looking at us weird, that girl could reject us, she could think something about us is not good enough, and then what? What are we all fearing? We're fearing rejection. We're fearing looking stupid. We're fearing sounding stupid. We're fearing not being good enough. I'm not gonna address the not being good enough point, although that's gonna be a subject for another video. I'm gonna give you a little trick to overcome that for life, okay? How do you overcome your fear in general with the game? Click the like button below and also press the subscribe. Make sure you click the bell button so you get updated about my new five videos a week, Sunday through Thursday. Also a sixth video of the week, which will be my YouTube live stream at 4 p.m. EST on Sundays. So first I wanna give a little story about how I came to want to make this video. So as you guys know, I run the WhatsApp Mastermind group. The official launch is coming uh, this week and that will be called Pocket Casanova. You're gonna see a few videos this week where I go through the details of that. Guys are getting a ton of value in that group, okay? Because I'm there 24 seven except when I'm sleeping. I'm giving expert advice to any and all game questions and situations that you guys may have. So in that group, one of the members, he said that he's been having trouble walking up to that girl that he sees in public, or when he sees a hot girl, he's chickening out. He goes on further to say that he does door-to-door -door sales for a living. All right, so he's going up and knocking, like cold knocking on strangers' doors, and I did this for a summer a couple years ago, just to see how it relates to game, and there's a lot of parallels, okay? And he's cold knocking on the door, that person could reject him, that person could be rude, that person could blow him off, but he says he's totally confident at the doors because he's been doing it for his career and he has no problem with it. And I guess he also probably doesn't care what those people think of him. But when he's putting his ego on the line and putting himself out there to a hot girl, that's where things become a little tricky. Here's what you're gonna do. This is the new rule. From now on, you're gonna count the number of approaches you do at the doors when you're doing your job, and you have to do at least that many cold approaches on women in social settings for that week. So what happened? He said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that. And I was like, don't fucking cheat. Don't lie, don't, you know, don't just tell us you're doing it and still be chickening out. Actually count your approaches and count the amount of doors you're knocking and make sure you're approaching at least half the amount of doors that you knock in a given week. All right, so after the first week, what's happened? He gave us a little update. He happened to go and meet a girl and she like called last minute and was like, oh, I'm not feeling well and et cetera and she didn't show up. On his walk back to his car, I think he was at a restaurant or a bar or something, on his walk back to his car, he saw this other hot chick and he's like, oh, I can get in one of my approaches here which will count against the amount of doors that I've knocked. So he rolled up and then he also used some stuff that he saw in my 10 minute pull breakdown about just being normal and having a conversation, built some comfort with the girl, scheduled a date and he reported back to us in the group and he said, when I saw that hot chick, you know, prior to this week, I would have chickened out. I would have made up excuses. Well, I'll approach the next one or, you know, she might not like me anyways or whatever it may be, instead of just being a man and going in and taking action. He said, now when I see a hot girl, I'm looking at it as an opportunity to knock down the amount of tally he has for how many approaches he has to do in that given week. So it's been like a complete reframe, a complete flip upside down. Okay, so now when he sees a beautiful woman, he sees it as an opportunity, not just for this little challenge, but he, he's kind of like beat that fear already. So now he sees it, and, and obviously nothing terrible is gonna happen. Worst case scenario, the girl's like, oh no, I'm not interested, or maybe she's really mean to him, but it's not the end of the world, like you're still alive, there's gonna be other hot girls that will like you. And I'm gonna go into, in a little bit, in the video, a little bit later, how to make challenges for yourself like this, okay, in other ways. When I first started doing game, I had approach anxiety like crazy. I'd be sitting on like the subway or in a taxi on the way out to the venues 
like memorizing my openers. I was doing mystery method. Memorizing my openers, memorizing my routines, memorizing my negs. I'm just dreading like, fuck, once I get there, I'm gonna actually have to fucking walk up to strangers. What if I don't know what to say? What if I run out of things to say? Hey, it's Owen from Real Social Dynamics. I'm gonna demonstrate here with the student is how potent our mindset is in the results that it reaps. Like constantly, yeah. Let's yeah. Kill, kill if the very good to us. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. like post game. What if she's not interested? What if she has a boyfriend? What if her friends judge me? What if other people around are listening? What if a whole bunch of girls reject me? What if all of them reject me? What's that gonna do to my ego? What's, what's that gonna do to my self-esteem? And these, you guys can all relate to this. Anyone that's done cold approach and walked up to strangers to speak to them is battling these fears and trying to pretend that everything's gonna be okay. Now, one thing that Mystery instructed, which helped me in the early days, is that you go with your wingman and you, for instance, take out $200 out of the ATM. Okay? And you hand it to your wingman. And for every time you do an approach, you get back 20 bucks. Okay? You approach, get back 20 bucks. Approach, get back 20 bucks. So that forces you to either do 10 approaches or lose some amount of money. If you do zero approaches, you lose 200 bucks. Okay? And you gotta be firm with this shit. You guys should do this stuff with your friends. That forces you to fucking do it, right? Like, I can't tell you how many, live, how many live programs I teach. We'll go to a mall or something, and I tell them, like, when I tell you to go in, or even when I'm not around, like, you need to see that girl go straight in. If you have time, and then you're not in, like, a terrible mindset or terrible mood, you should go and do the approach. Let me tell you guys something as a side note. If you make that rule right now, like, all of you that are watching this video, make it as a rule for the rest of your life that when you see a hot girl, and you're not in, like, a totally pissed off mood or, like, super, super tired or, like, late to meet someone or you know you're not out with like your fucking mother or something where it's like inappropriate to go do that to respect your mother <laughs> make the rule that you're gonna go in and do the approach okay and you're not gonna pussy out because trust me all those times that you pussied out any one of those girls could have been an amazing part of your life for months or even years okay and trust me i've been with over a thousand chicks now there's over ten thousand phone number leads in my phone and there's been plenty of times where I was like terrified, like in certain, usually in day game situations where there's like a whole bunch of people around, it's quiet. Like in a club, you can blend in, right? They don't know, people don't know who you're there with. No one really gives a shit about strangers talking to strangers. Everyone's kind of mingling. You know, your voices are getting drowned out in the external surroundings by the music. There's all this other shit going on. So I was in CVS in America. It's a drugstore, like a convenience store. And there was a pretty hot chick you could tell it was one of those things where she like wasn't wearing makeup and she was kind of dressed down, but you could tell she would be like really hot if she did herself up. And she was in front of me in line, in line at the pharmacy, right, to pick up a prescription. And I was like, shit, like there's all these people around and it was like really quiet in the store. And I was like, if only I saw this girl at a bar or club, I could just walk up to her, I'd blend in with the environment, everything would be cool. And I wouldn't have to fucking sweat it. Or I, know, I would know exactly what to do and say and I would either take her home that night or I would take her on a date and everything would be fucking awesome. And I was just kind of going back and forth mentally, like should I do it, should I not? And our places were moving up in line and then I'm like shit, I'm gonna run out of time. And I've been in situations plenty of times where I did chicken out, not so much in the recent years, but earlier on in the game, earlier on when I was coming up in this, it's easy to just be like, oh, I'll do the next one, right? What happens is you just get into this habit of like, okay, I'll do the next one, I'll do the next one, I'll do that. That's what I was talking about on these live programs. We'll be in a mall and I'll say, okay, go in. And the guy will be like, uh, which girl? And it won't be like one girl lots of times. Or it's like very obvious. I'll be like the girl in the red shirt. When she's, there's like two girls and I'm like the one in the red shirt. And they all look at each other like, you do it, you do it, you do it. And like, then the girl's like coming in. It's almost like advancing the place in line at the drugstore. And then all of a sudden she passes and they're like, oh, we'll do the next one. No. Stop doing that. Stop being a pussy. Stop being a baby about things, okay? Force yourself to do the approach, okay? Trust me. Doing that little mental shift where you no longer embrace that fear, okay? Because, and I'm gonna go into where that fear comes from in a second, and that's gonna be really helpful for you guys to get over this. But instead of letting that fear control you, embrace the fear, face it head on, go and do the approach, okay? And trust me, it's usually, gonna not be a whole end of the world scenario. The girl's either gonna be receptive or she's gonna be neutral and you're gonna try to make her receptive through interaction or she's gonna be unreceptive. But you shouldn't be expecting every girl to be receptive. It's just impossible for anyone unless you're a celebrity. Even then, there's just girls that are having bad days or in relationships or whatever, they're just, or they're in a bad mood, they don't wanna to talk to anyone. You should be doing the approach. 
in this particular situation, I just force myself because I, I've missed approaches before and then you always wonder, you can wonder for days or weeks, like what the fuck? Like what if I had talked to her and she was into it and we went on a date and then I was like banging that hot girl and we were having an awesome time together. And so I forced myself to do it, got her info, and then I looked her up and she was like, she is a professional model. So she's like in all these like spreads laying in like, you know, these really provocative poses. She was like a tan blonde chick, like super fucking hot as fuck, like when she was all done up. And I was like, oh my God. Like she looked like a 775 in person, but like online she looked like a 95. And of course there was some photo editing and stuff, but she had like an amazing body. We ended up meeting out at the bar and ended up banging her. And then I was thinking in my, in my mind, like if I had just chickened out that day and said, I'll do the next one, I would never have been able to bang that chick. And lots of the chicks that I've had on rotation over the years, like I've, I've had a lot of experience in this. I was really terrified at first, either because they were really hot or because people would have overheard in a day game situation or because, you know, whatever, whatever reason where I just figured, okay, I'll just give in to the fear or whatever. And then I was like, no, fuck that. You have to mentally and consciously tell yourself like, no, fuck that. All right, that could even be like your little mantra. When that girl comes along, am I gonna be a pussy or am I gonna fucking say no, fuck that and go in? Like if you don't do the approach, your odds are 0% to get that girl in your life. Okay, by just going in, they raise significantly. Okay, and as your game gets better, you'll have better results. Okay, so approach anxiety, real quick note where that comes from. In tribal times, we had like, what's known as the fight or flight response. It's related to the part in your brain, the fear circuit called the amygdala. Now, we evolved this to sense situations of danger. The mystery is the one that, that comes up with this little explanation, but I like it. He says that in a tribe of like 20 people, say 10 of them are female, a few of them are like either really old or really young, and they're not suitable mates. Maybe you have like five females or something like that that are uh, eligible for mating with. If you hit on a chicken she's taken, you could be killed. There was no law, there was no order or anything like that. It was just the strong survive and the alpha guy could kill you. Or if she rejected you, you could look like a fool to the rest of the tribe and possibly never reproduce and pass on your genes. So mystery says like even at the top level, and I can attest to this, you're still gonna feel that fear a lot of the time which is called approach anxiety, the term that we use. And you have to treat it, as mystery says, like a pebble in your shoe. It's there, you fucking ignore it, right? If you were like walking along the street, in a busy street or whatever, and you had a pebble in your shoe, and you, maybe you were late for somewhere, you're not gonna go into this whole production to like undo your, your, untie your shoes and like get the pebble out. It's there, but you're like, I don't give a shit. And you just fucking deal with, with life that way. As you train yourself, right, you reframe, like this guy in my mastermind group did, Oh, it's an opportunity to get a girl in my life. And he was like thrilled. He was like, this girl was really receptive. She was hot. But like everything at first was like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Right. And he almost chickened out and embraced that. And he's like, no, like John Anthony told me you have to go in. You have to fucking get this minimum number of approaches. I've been out on live programs. I kid you not. Where I've had guys that are just shaking and trembling and stuff on their, on their approaches. They're just so terrified to talk to a stranger. And I'm like, we're not going home until you do five approaches. We literally were out, he finished the fifth one at 9 a.m. And that, I still talk to that dude regularly and it's his whole life, that was the turning point of his life. It was a huge fucking pain in the ass to like, stay out at nine and like keep coaching him through like, dude, like man up, stop being a pussy, it's not the end of the world. He had to like, it was like his shell was like shattering over the, over the course of that night. And the next day he's like, I talked to five strangers. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no shit. Now you can talk to thousands of strangers. And he's like, wow, and he was just like liberated. He had, of course, he had tons of other work to do on himself, but that was like the catalyst that allowed him to break free and become a beautiful butterfly. Whatever is fun for you, whatever will motivate you, do that, okay? And at the end of the day, this is a numbers game. The skill is very, very, very important as well, but you've got to put in the approaches and the volume. And if you're always chickening out or you're always giving into the fears, that's going to lead to a lot of problems, okay? And apply that to every other area of game where you have fear, okay? When it's time to go for the kiss, when it's time to ask the girl to leave with you, all right? When it's time to make that sexual joke on a date, okay? I'm not gonna make this super long video and go into all those examples. Apply the same principles. You feel the fear, you think, oh, I might not want to do this. Fuck it, shut the fuck up to your internal voice and make the move, okay? I wanna encourage you all to subscribe, okay? Every Sunday, 4 p.m. EST, make sure you tune in. If you subscribe and click the bell button, you will get notifications for that. This is John Anthony, I will see you in the next video. Kill your fear, see you later.